Okay, hello and welcome. Can y'all see the um what I'm sharing in the screen, which is the slides that is the commanding wealth slide circle slides? If you're just joining, I apologize. I have to have my video off because there is a weird lag between my voice and talking, and it looks like a really bad old kung fu movie. Okay. But um, welcome to the circle, and we do this every week. I'm committed to doing this until the end of August. But if hey, if we have the interest and um, the group keeps growing, then uh, we may continue or um, continue on. But you know, summertime is kind of a time of a slump, and you know, as far as events and and being able to learn and connect with people, but at the same time, it can be really busy. Um, we're going through a busy time at our house. We're getting ready to move <laughs> and we're moving from Texas to the East Coast. And we literally don't know when that's happening. We just know it's going to be sometime between August 1st and the end of the year. Okay, I just want to give a shout out to hello to um, uh, Sharon. Hello, Sharon. It's wonderful to see you and Sandra, Jody, Becky, and Alfred. And... Um, the way this works is we have a chance to come together. This is about creating a pause, just a moment in our busy lives that we can just align and be aligned with people who have a desire to create something better in their life. They want to attract, create, or manifest something greater, and they want to do it ethically and authentically. And we use a method that's called the one command uh, created by Sarah Lovejoy, who was my teacher and mentor. Um, but also we uh, go with what consciousness wants to teach us and what's present in the moment. So uh, we have been on a beautiful journey together and we have been having these lessons and we've been building each week. And I want to let you know, guys, that that is organic. I don't have a big plan for the group except to be present to you. But what we've really been learning is how to um, stand in there's what we want to create and where we are now. And we call that the gap. And very often what's in that gap is fear, struggle, doubt, every limiting belief will rise up Um to stop you, even if you have a great working plan and you have a format and a model and you have all these different things, you have to be aligned, mind, body, spirit. I wouldn't just say energetically. We have to embody that which we desire ahead of the fulfillment of that desire until we can actually see it manifested. And very often it gets manifested and we aren't even aware of it because we're so used to struggle and being on to the next thing, we aren't paying attention. So what we want to do is create that space and one, witness and celebrate each other as masters. The master in me greets the master in you and in this space, let there only be love between us. That way there's no judgment. I'm already meeting the greater part of you. But I'm also from this place of mastery and letting love lead i'm able to meet our lesser fearful um less than charming less than beautiful less than perfect selves because all we've been doing is trying to figure it out guys and so certain behaviors certain beliefs certain things take over um if you're just joining welcome um i have to have my video off because it's got a weird lag so um, pardon me for just having my picture up today. Um, I will try to join from time to time, but if it, it's too distracting, then I'm going to go back to just having my image up. So we always start with this. We always start with a check-in. And this is, um, we're going to do a group check-in. And then um, I have some news of one of our group members and we always create this space and I wanna make sure that we create space for her today, even though she can't be on the call. So um, if you have, let me make this a bigger view. If you have um, a question, like good news to share or you 
you have a question, like you've been trying something out, but it doesn't seem quite clear, or you just need some help uh, or support, this is our space to do that. So does anybody have any news or a question for me, or how can I help you today? Let's see. I see Emily is on, Lucy, Leslie, uh, Shamim. Oh, what a wonderful group. We've got 11 on today. Um, if you have a question, you can go ahead and just pop on or something to share. This is our check-in time. So anybody have anything for me or the group today? Let's see. All right. Well, I have a funny little manifestation that's happened this week, and maybe this will kind of kick it off a little bit. Um, we are getting ready to move. And at the same time, every vehicle at our house all kind of committed Hari Kari. I mean, it's been, <laughs> we keep our vehicles for a long time uh, just because we knew um, there were changes happening. We have the big move. We are downsizing and we just wanted to kind of keep things rolling. Right. How many people relate to that? I don't want to change too much. All of our vehicles are paid off. Everything's great and perfect, but we don't really want to try to go out and um, get something new. So my daughter had kept paying and paying and paying for repairs on a car. And if you've ever been in that trap, you understand. I hit that with my faithful old Kia um, last year. And finally, I just had to say uh, farewell, dear friend. Her name was Rhonda Kay, and I loved her a lot, <laughs> but um, it was time for them to go. But we still said we need this kind of car. My daughter said, suddenly said, you know what? What we need is a minivan, and it needs to be able to do all this. But she said, I don't want to spend a lot of money. Um, I know what I can afford, and I have no idea how that can happen because that seems unrealistic. I said, oh, you just called it in. And then we were kind of talking about cars. And then I said, well, when we get there, you know, we're going to make need to make sure when we're in the East Coast, we're going to have to make sure um, we have certain, these certain features. And one of the weird little things was we need these particular kind of mud maps. You know, I don't know. We just were dreaming. And um, so we just said, well, this is going to be interesting because my daughter, you know, uh, my son-in-law about to get hired, but doesn't have that new income. My daughter had a job that she said, I just cannot bear this. So she quit the job. And so our money felt like it was a little constricted to it. I said, oh, it's, we're just taking a breath in. That's all it is. We're just taking a breath in. And they were driving by um, our small town florist who is shutting down. And we just loved them so much. They'd been here for 30 years. And they said, oh yeah, we're retiring and we're going to go live with the grandkids. And they had their van that they had, it was only, it's a 2014, I'll confess, but it's not, it's not a new one, but it looked brand new. They had done every single thing perfect on it. And they wanted a cash price of uh, 10,000 and blue book, it's like 15,000. And we knew if we went, if that very vehicle was on a lot, it would be much more because cars are crazy right now. And my daughter came home and said, hey, there's this car. And I said, oh, let's get that car. And every single thing flew together. And they're like, mom, this is your car. I said, honey, it's not my car. It's a family car, but this is the car to trade in. We are so freaking happy with this car because we still don't have a car payment. We were able to just take care of it. It was less than what we were expecting to pay, pay. And it was like, it's exactly what we need to transport our dogs and ourselves and get all the rest of this. So that one thing, when we said yes to this one little opportunity, one little thing, two or three other things started flipping and rolling as a result of that. So say yes to the small thing, even if you weren't prepared to, that's kind of the lesson there. But um, we're really happy. And uh, my daughter called it in. My daughter is a very powerful manifester. And when she gets down, I always remind her that she is a powerful manifester. And I want to remind you that you are too. Um, we have two sad bits of news. And so we need some support. Um, one Shamim is saying, I have bad news this month, um, but she did lose some money. So 
Shamim, I'm very sorry that you're going through that right now, but here's what your affirmation is. Okay, the affirmation is this, that there is no such thing as loss in the universe. Breathe into that. And whatever it is that caused you to lose that, that is just one cause. And then the other piece of that is all things are working together for my good. So you have to claim the good from this $26,000 loss. Okay. And it feels completely counterintuitive. And you don't know how that money is going to be returned to you or the interest that be that the universe has for you. But I want to encourage you to start meeting those feelings of loss and the fear of more loss and the shame and anger and everything that comes with that, with that command. Like all things are working together for my good. I don't know how all things are working together for my good. Okay. And so we're going to try this. Here's this point called a loss, right? And we go, oh no, it's lost. It's like a period, but it's not. You have to add the and. And that way we keep it moving. Okay, do you see this flow with my hand, magical thing? But we could even say, hey, there's a point where all the money is returned and we have this point of loss and we have no idea how we can recover it. So what we do is between knowing what we want and, and what we don't have, between that money being restored to me and not and and this loss let there only be love and then we bring our fingers together oh it's lagging again and then we drop our hands between knowing and not knowing between this loss and its recovery right but please make your commands and every affirmation and every time you um think about this go it's going it's going to be so interesting to see how this is all restored to me, okay? All right, and we are while witnessing that. All right, and um, we wanna give support to Emily. Emily, I'm sorry to hear this. My mom took another fall, broke her femur, hip replacement, doing well, but the fam's pushing me to return to the States to care for her. International travel is terrible at this time and you need prayers. Okay, so the family's pushing right? You, for you to be in the default of the caretaker. And this is the time that you've claimed as your time of freedom, because you have been the caretaker and the giver and the doer, right? And so we, one, I just want to, right now, if everybody could just want to throw support to Emily's mother, that she gets everything that she needs. She already has everyone and everything she needs. And Emily's support in being true to herself and her heart, because this was a big leap. Emily has, can I, if it's all right, if I tell, she left her, finally retired from her career and went to Mexico, one for physical healing. And now she's in a restoration period. And I'm just going to say, Emily, your cup's not full yet. Okay. Your cup's not full yet. I... I'm just going to support it and affirm. And there's a part of you that feels that too, right? Is that I don't want to just, you know, re be reading in this, but you're nodding. Okay. So we're just going to breathe into this. And right now, I just want you to just breathe into that. Mom has what she needs. Mom has who she needs. I don't know how mom has everything she needs, right? I only know she does. And they want you to do it because they think your life is worth less than theirs. Your needs are worth less than theirs. You have to create the gap sometimes in order for it to be filled. So between knowing and not knowing, let there only be love. Okay. So I just want to validate that. And um, thank you so much. Uh, Charlinda, I want to read this. I just want to say thank you so far. I've commanded for my lost, lost car keys that were found. I have a monthly job, which is less than I used to, um, less than you're used to, yet you have another short-term contract. You've been more aware of 
where your beliefs and are and there's more space and ease my ask are big, bigger and i'm willing to step into what's required of me to do that i appreciate you all in that group uh we appreciate you and i you know what's important is your ask is bigger but your willingness and we're going to talk about this today right it's going to be that willingness to if it's commit to learn to be in that space to allow you be willing to be uncomfortable right Oh, that's where the magic is. So thank you for sharing. We're going to look forward to hearing about your giant windfall contract before long, because uh, you're setting the stage for that. Alvaro, hello, Alvaro. <laughs> Got a lot of wonderful people on. Um, And then I did see that uh, Lucy was on. And let's see who else. Hey, Larry, let's see who else came today. If anybody else has anything else they'd like to share, I do want to share on behalf of one of our um, clients uh, or one of our members of the group. You've seen her name. She hadn't really participated much, but she, um, it's Deborah West, who's one of our members. And um, Deborah and I go a long way back. She attended my intro talks way back in Dallas at the Spiritual Fitness Center way back in 2005. So we have been in each other's lives uh, for a long time. She gave me singing lessons. She attended every class, every training, and just always just brought so much love and joy to me. And um, Deborah's darling husband, Warren, did pass away last night. And so she can't be with the group, but we're going to be putting her into this circle of love as we're coming into that expansion. And, um, and she is surrounded with a beautiful community, but we want to hold this space energetically for her. Okay. So thank you so much. Um, I want to check in, see if there's any other news, any other shares. Okay, great. So I'm going to, I always share this every week, but we have some folks that are new. So I want to make sure that um, everyone has a copy of the workbook and how to get to the Facebook group. So I'm going to put that in the um, chat right now. But we are going to be formatting commands. And this is the exercise. And this um, action guides explains a little bit more about the one command process. But today I want to talk about a different way of commanding. We have commanded um, like we usually close our eyes, we go up to theta, and what we're doing is we are creating this pause in our thoughts and our programming. We're lowering our brain wave. Like that whole six step process is literally about lowering your brain wave into the theta brain wave so that we can come into that observer and speak what it is that we want and be able to witness it coming in, witness the fulfillment. And we're motor driving the brain to go into these different brainwave states, okay? Um, last week, I think it was, we shared about doing commands into your body, wherever you're feeling the block, that you can just speak that. Like if you're feeling like, hey, I want to do this, but I don't have any energy. I just feel like I have no power. You can speak into your power center into your stomach there, okay? Um, or if you're feeling, hey, nobody wants me, <laughs> or you simply can't see, you know, you could speak into your heart there, or like, I don't know what the value is that I bring. That's speaking into your heart. If you aren't able to find the words to speak, you can literally do commands into your throat chakra in the base of your throat. And if you need to be able to get a vision, you can command into your third eye right there at the, above the brow. And I always have people massage in a circular way to open it. But you can literally say, I don't know how I have a clear vision. Okay. So I've been demonstrating that from time to time. But I want to talk about embodiment. And we touched on this last week. And we went into kind of a different space. But I want to reiterate this. Reiterate this. The state of being you wish to receive the fulfillment of your one command is in the same state of being that you command from. 
So that's why we spend time in gratitude, appreciation. We're creating alignment. But I also want you to think about um, how you like to receive. Some people love to receive uh, surprises. Some people love miracles. They will literally like block off the practical ways of doing things because they love miracle stories. And I have to confess, I could be one of those people because I really love a good miracle story. Um, I always tell a story about how I decided that um, I wanted to repay my mother a certain amount of money that she had made available to me, but she went and it was through a credit card. And this was several years ago. And she um, wound up bankruptcy, you know, doing a bankruptcy and everything. And I was like, you know, I still want to make sure I give her that money, but I don't know how to give her the money. I, and I said, I want to pay you back. She said, oh no, it's all gone. Don't worry about it. I said, I still felt the debt, right? And it was blocking some things because I had some shame around it. And, I, and so I just did a command. So I don't know how my mother is paid in full and uh, she's able to receive this payment. I only know it's so now and I am fulfilled. And if you wonder how to do a command, that's how you do it. You go, what do I want? And then you realize, hey, what is the block to it? So, um, a couple of weeks later, we were going out to lunch, my mom and my sister and my daughter, and we were, it was in South Fort Worth. And as we were coming back from lunch and I was driving her car at the time, my mother's car at the time, um, that was just, a. we were already seeing a whole lot of little fender benders. And it was like a bumper car ride. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. We were just watching these all over. And all of a sudden, a car in front of me stopped really short and I narrowly missed hitting that car. And I was like, oh, mom, I'm so sorry. She said, no, that is great driving. And then just about that time, somebody rear-ended us. Well, we get out, we do the insurance thing. And turned out the people gave bad information. They cheated her. They were like, oh, no, they actually didn't have insurance at all. They gave her a fake name, the whole thing. And it was like well, I don't know how this is going to turn out to be an advantage. Here, I just commanded for more money to come to my mom. And now here's this big insurance deductible. Well, my mom took the car, shopped it around, found out what insurance was going to pay, got the car fixed for less. And you know what? She made about $3,500 on that claim. That was about how much I owed her. And so that was how my mom liked to receive money because my mother really loved working the system. And I didn't judge it. Like I would prefer not to have an auto accident, right? But you have to think about your subconscious mind will go to the past on how it's received money before. And if you don't want to receive money through a job or through an auto accident or any of those things, you have to embody that greater way of being. You have to embody a whole new way. But how? How could you possibly do it if you've never experienced this before? Well, here's the first question. I want you to say, you know, go, I want to create money through a state of joy and excitement. Or I want to create my next big windfall through my business. I want to create um, a client base that loves paying me. Well, how would that feel? If this were happening, how would you know in advance? How could you have that feeling if you never experienced it before? Because you have to embody that. And they teach this all the time. You you are the fulfillment, you are the embodiment of the wish fulfilled. Act as if, get the feeling, all the powers. And if you've never experienced it, or let's say, hey, I want to experience it in love, but the word love has been used as an excuse to abuse you and control you, you're going to run away from love. So here's a, here's the start of your questions. If you knew what it felt like, we can say felt like, looked like, sounded like, what would you know? 
Breathe in. Breathe in. If you knew, what would you know? Because that there is a part of you that knows. So if you knew what it felt like to live a to go from success to success to success, what would you know? That's the start of embodiment. What would you know? Because you would feel it. And what would be the other thing? You would have evidence. So that's why we do the things like, hey, when you get the image, like you've done the command, then we always create the three little vignettes. Okay. So we, you can motor drive your evidence. So write down, and if you have pen and paper, write now, because you know what it is that you want, write down, if you knew, what would you know? Because what we want certainty, we want the feeling, we want confirmation. So what would that be for you? Keep breathing into that, yes. And even if you've never experienced it before, that's okay. What if we did a command on that? So that our greater knowing, because there's a part of you that absolutely knows. Hey, there's a part of you that remembers. You know, you probably have had some successes in your life, but you had it framed neg negatively. Okay, well, oh, up and you know, always just called it bad luck, or I was too stupid, or a good thing. Every time there's a good thing, two bad things happen, right? And you're always speaking that, and you, and it's hard to look back and let that that success. And one one key to that to be an embodiment is to allow that to exist right now to the degree that it can exist. Allow yourself to be in your awareness to the degree that you can be aware. Because there's this little thing called 2020 hindsight, right? In five years, you're going to look back and go, wow, I had everything. Wow. I didn't know how powerful I was. Why did I think it was so hard? It turned out that was the best thing that could happen. If it had to happen here, that, that hey, everything was set up perfectly for that. So the command would be, so wait a minute, let, let's step back because if we bundled all of that, if I knew, what would I know? What would be the evidence, right? What would be the feeling? What kind of things would I think about or tell myself? What kind of things would I be imagining? Remember I tell them the story about the silly car and we're imagining, you know, my daughter said a minivan and I'm like, oh, I immediately had a flashback to a minivan that I love, but it was dangerous. And it's like, oh, we want a car that's safer, right? Um, she thought I didn't want it. And I was turning my nose up. I said, no, I was just having a flashback. And then next thing you know, we're, we're dreaming and we're talking about all these qualities, how we would know. And when we saw the thing, it was an immediate yes, right? So how are you talking to yourself? What are you imagining? If you knew, what would you know? And all of that come together is called embodiment. And so if your command were fulfilled and we had all of these elements, I was looking for another slide earlier and it was too complicated to explain, but if all of these elements were had come together and you knew it, you knew that you knew and you were looking around and said, oh my God, this is the thing I was commanding for. Why was it so hard? <laughs> Why did I make it so hard? Why did I need to be in struggle? Let's bundle that up into a word. So what would that word be? I don't know how I embody abundance. I don't know how I embody confidence. I don't know how I embody freedom. I don't know how I embody support. What would that be? What is that one word? 
And if you can't find the word, here's the secret. Bundle it all up and label it as either a color or a number. So if I were a 76, well, if I were embodying 76 for all of these elements, if I were embodying sky blue, wow. And we have an idea about that. We got a little fleeting feeling. So let's try it out. You already know what you want to embody. I'm going to assume that. Okay. Right, if y'all are with me, give me a thumbs up. Is this making sense? Give me a thumbs up if this is making sense. You got it. Jody's smiling at me. I see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. If you're, yeah. So right now, I just want you to make the statement out loud. We're not even going to go to theta, but this is going to be our command today. And then we're going to make space for your command. So I don't know how I embody and say it out loud to yourself. I don't know how I embody and whatever that is. I only know I am now. And I am fulfilled. Do it again. Notice how it feels the second time. You know, just the statement alone is super powerful, isn't it? I, I don't know how I, you could even say, I don't know how I fully embody whatever that is. I only know I am fully embodying that now and I am fulfilled. And Who's starting to get that? Suddenly they feel like they want to say, add more to it and say it more. And this is what I kind of say, call going on a riff or you can stack. So I don't know how I embody fin full financial freedom. I only know I am fully financially free now and I am fulfilled. I don't know how I am confidently going after what I desire without fear of losing something more. I only know I'm fearlessly going after what I desire now and I am fulfilled. I don't know how everything I perceive to be a loss in the past is now a stepping stone to the complete fulfillment of my desires. I only know it's so now and all things are working together for my good now. And do you see how I'm rolling and I'm building on that? This is not anything I've written down. You may need to, but I want to encourage you to actually start speaking from your authority as a creator. So maybe the, when I say that, that is, Poof, how do I know I'm not in, in, in my authority as a creator? Because you're still second guessing yourself and you're doubting yourself and you're wondering what if, and then you're criticizing yourself for even wanting the thing. That's how you know. So I don't know how I embody my author my true authority as a creator. You see how that starts to build? And then in this space, these answers start like arriving and you start speaking it. And the more you speak it, the that's what you start bringing into life. Are y'all with me? Is, is this good? Am I going too far? Am I over explaining? Yeah. Who's ready? Who's ready to go up and create this? Woo! <laughs> so now you know what it is that you want to create. We're going to do the embodiment command, and then we're going to do your, we're going to do your first command, which is what it is you want to manifest, right? That you came here for. And then we're going to do an embodiment command. Okay. I'm going to get a little sip of water. Oh, my goodness. God, I love you. Okay. So we're going to go through the six steps of the one command. You're already in it. I know that you are, but we're just going to go ahead and allow ourselves to get grounded. Get back into your body for just a moment. Feel your connection to the earth. 
And if there's any resistance, fear, stress, any doubt, we're just going to let it release and go down into the earth so it can be healed and transformed. Let the earth energy start to come up into your body, up your feet, into your knees, your hips, up your spine, across your shoulders. Yeah, that stubborn neck. Ooh, shoulders, down your arms, all the way to your fingertips. That creative life force energy as you bring your attention to your heart and that love in your heart. And the master in me greets the master in you. And in this space, let there only be love between us. And just let your heart light light up. And in your mind's eye, I want to invite you to become aware of the other hearts that are supporting you and surrounding you right now as we come into a circle. And in this circle, we're holding a space for everyone who's gone through a loss, everyone who may be struggling, everyone who doesn't know the words. There's your loved ones, but maybe you need to put yourself in that circle. And witness yourself in that circle. And surrounding us are helpers seen and unseen. Now I'm going to invite you to become aware of the spiritual life force energy that's coming in. And it's coming right down through the top of your head, through the crown chakra. It's going down a cha channel down both sides of your spine. It's going all the way down into the earth. And it's bringing in that spiritual life force energy. And that energy is all mixing and blending with that creative life force energy. Your own energy. Your intention. All coming into beautiful and perfect alignment. Now with your eyes closed. Roll your eyes up. And send your consciousness up that pole of light. And the higher you go, the faster you go. And soon you find yourself in the outer edges in the black void of space. Break through the darkness into the light of pure open potential. And we're going to select the first thing to command for. I don't know how I and state what it is that you desire. I only know it is so now, and I am fulfilled. Now just l let that expand out to an idea even greater that serves more good in its fulfillment. We're telling your higher consciousness to go get the answer. And it serves more good in its fulfillment. Bring your attention. You can roll your eyes up or you can relax your eyes if you're feeling strained. But now the next command is for the embodiment. I don't know how I am fully embodying the fulfillment of my command. I only know I am now and I am fulfilled. Yes, I'll do this command for you. And I don't know how. Everything that I counted as a loss is returned to me. Is blessed to me. With interest. Everything I lost because of programming or belief about a curse or my doubts, anything that was taken or stolen from me is now returned to me threefold sevenfold tenfold a hundredfold pressed down running over i only know it is now and i am fulfilled because there is no such thing as loss in the universe i don't know how everything is working together for my good I only know all the forces within me 
in my world and in the universe are aligned to my good now. And I am fulfilled. And I don't know how I am standing in my own authority as a creator, my rights as a creator. I only know I'm fully embodying the rights and power as a creator now. And I am fulfilled. Now let all that go. Let that expand out to something even greater that serves more good in its fulfillment, even greater than that. And now just move yourself over that first you could start witnessing everything being returned to you. Money, the blessings, the connection. And just be in this state of gratitude as you are witnessing that coming in and yeah, and now feel yourself coming back down into your body. And now just allow yourself to just be in this space of gratitude, appreciation. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And as this greater state of being begins to arrive, this full embodiment let the old ways unwind, unwind, unwind. And we're speaking directly to your subconscious mind and even to your master DNA strand that is holding the family programming and imprinting and all the cultural conditioning. We're, and we're just going to let that all unwind, unwind, unwind. Let it go, let it go, let it go. And then just make space to allow these new ideas to begin to integrate. <sighs> Feel that energy coming in to every cell and fiber of your being to be the full embodiment of your command fulfilled. Now, before you open your eyes, take a couple of breaths, settle back into your body. And think about your command of what it is that you want. And now, what is it that you know now that maybe you didn't know before? And you may be in a blank space, but right now, just asking that question, your new things are going to start coming into your awareness. You may have memories. You may go, oh my gosh, it's all, now I get it. But just do that internal check. What do you know now that you didn't know before? But you could also look for that old feeling. And if you can't find it, just check in. Notice. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. <sighs> and what do we say, guys? We always say keep a journal. This especially today. Um, I'm hoping the uh, record, the transcript happened. If it did, I will make sure it gets sent out to everybody. The only people who get this recording by email are the people who are in the group. Okay. So uh, be sure and keep a journal. And what, what else do we say? Who knows? What do we say? It's the seventh step. <laughs> that inspired action and you actually want to take action as quickly as possible and uh, link that action to the fulfillment like hey if i've got new clients come in i if, if i knew i was getting seven new clients or 10 people in my group or 100 people what do i need to do today to be ready for that okay or what is that phone call what is the thing so think and act as if your command is fulfilled Okay, Emily's saying, excellent, inspired action. You got it, girl. All right, I'd love to get some feedback because uh, we did a lot of teaching and, and we, but we've covered some new ground today. Any questions or comments about today's session? I'd love to get it back. Um, was this valuable to you? Yeah, is this what we needed today? Okay. Uh, you can just unmute. I would love to hear from you. I need to hear your voice. I feel like I'm kind of just talking to the wind, even though I can see you. 
Thank you, Alfred. Wonderful session, felt deep connection within herself. Thank you. Anybody else? We're, we're co-creating this. You know, you guys are the ones I'm tapping in. Like when I work with a client, it's hard to explain this. And this is why sales copy is so hard for me. And if someone's good at sales copy, message me. <laughs> because my superpower is literally that when that master in me greets the master in you and I start talking and I'm giving all this wisdom, what's happening is I'm channeling from your greater wisdom. Sometimes I'm learning along with you. I'm like, holy crap, this is so good. <laughs> Where did this come from? And it comes from you, okay? So if someone knows how to help me frame that in beautiful, perfect sales copy, so that I can be in that space with more people. And Jody as a channeler, she knows this, but it's that's really what's happening. Okay. Um, it's great. Out of interest, take, have you ever had someone felt sleepy or have someone off not off during a session? Yes, you're going into that deeper theta, and your conscious mind is just getting out of the way. Um when I was in classes with Asara way back at her hypnotherapy school, way back in like late nineties, Asara did not mind if people fell asleep in class because she said they're taking their conscious mind offline and letting the subconscious mind is taking um, control. But that's why I'm sure to send out the, um, it just goes deeper, faster. There's no resistance to it. So do not feel bad if you dozed off. Okay. All right. Anything else? Anybody else? All right. Um, hey, if this, um, if you feel like you want to go deeper with this work on a personal level, I have some coaching spots open and I am, um, I would love to work with you and help you. And I have different ways I work with people. Sometimes it's just, you know, a few sessions you need just need some support or sometimes you need some ongoing support and um but let's have a conversation about where you are and what help would you know one let's talk about what you need what that gap is and sometimes we have a blind spot and so this is a 30 minute strategy call so we can have a deep conversation about where you are where you want to be and what's stopping you and a lot of times in that session we're uncovering now this isn't a healing session this is just to have a conversation and if it looks like we want to work together and we'll talk we'll have a, another conversation about what that would look like but this is not a sales call this is my service call with you and um, this is so that we can find out about working together at a deeper level okay and all you do is that takes you to my calendly session okay any other questions or comments? Are we ready to go out and create? We're ready to make this happen? Okay. Hey, Emily, I want to check in with you. Um, I know this is going through a hard time. Was this helpful for you as you're thinking about dealing with your family? Very much so. Okay. Very much you. so. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yes, it's really helping me. Um, no, this is just this time last year, I was home, you know, taking care of her. Yeah. And, um, and it's, you know, I've been twice already in the last year and both times for six or seven weeks. And it's, you know, I just, it's, it's very difficult for me. I <laughs> so. know, cause, cause, yeah, I know. Because you want to be a good daughter and whatever time you have with her, you want to spend. But also, you want to be able to be there you need to be able to take care of yourself so that you can do that. And the right solution will arrive. Okay, you. you but I'm you sure. do have that inner shifting is happening for you, so you can be at the highest level of service without having to have everybody dump the job on you. Right. Okay. All right, honey. Thank you so much. Thank you. And um, I Shamim, I know that you she's been kind of in and out, and I hope that this was helpful for Shamim. But okay, I'm going to go ahead and end on this. I am going to attempt. It's working for the moment, <laughs> but I just want you to know that I really appreciate you taking time to be with us today. It's not just me, but with us and committing to your own growth. And um, I would encourage you, please, to invite people to this. If this has been valuable for you and you know anyone who is, you know, on that manifesting journey and they 
don't know where they're getting stuck and they need that feeling of support because a lot of times we you know we feel like we're doing it alone or in secret but um hey we're going to co-create this together so please invite your friends to this i'd really appreciate it okay so oh emily thank you i'm grateful to you too so everybody i'm gonna go ahead and let you go until next time this is Catherine perry the big vision coach i witness your mastery bye-bye everybody